Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 868th Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. Just to say, um, as I said earlier, um, I'm mixing the games up, I'm putting some new battles on, and I'm putting some old battles on. Well, this battle was fought on the 4th of February 2010. So this battle is over 14 years old. It's also a KWR rules battle which is King War Rules, okay? Now the King War Rules are 60K each, Rome versus Rome, no artillery, no archers, okay? That's the King, King's War rule, um, Rules, okay? As I say, this was four, over 14 years ago. Um, our first teammate is Brotherhood member Killer B. Now he's got 17 infantry and three cavalry. A lot of RTW veterans remember Killer B, very good player. And as I say, it's 60k each, so every single unit on this battlefield is fully upgraded. Three experienced stripes, gold shield, gold attack. Okay, and just to say that cavalry, of course, is not so effective. Um, on KWR as all the units are fully upgraded um, as we know cavalry can be very effective on a 31k battlefield but on the KWR rules um, battles cavalry are not that effective okay um, then our next teammate is Brotherhood member Talos now he's got 15 infantry and 5 cavalry I always used to think of, of Talos as the Brotherhood spy on Rome Total War and the reason I say that is because he was always on uh, Rome and he always knew what was going on. He always knew if there were any arguments between players or if there was ar any arguments between clans. Uh, if he wanted to know any information on Rome Total War, this was the go-to guy. So Brotherhood member Talos, very knowledgeable of what was going on. Uh, our next teammate is Brotherhood member FF, the supplier of this battle. And he has got 16 infantry and 4 cavalry. Okay, 16 infantry and 4 cavalry. And our last teammate is myself, a Spartan commander, and I have got 16 infantry and four cavalry. Okay, 16 infantry and four cavalry for me. Okay, you'll see I've got an old school armored cavalry general. Let's say 14 years ago, most of us, you know, probably about 15, 16 years ago, most of us have changed to an infantry general on a 31k battlefield but i think on kwr i still like to bring that uh, armored cavalry general to the battlefield there so i uh, say you got an eagle unit there look lots of eagle well i've got one eagle unit in my army there to give morale boost to the infantry and i can take my cavalry general around the battlefield with my cavalry giving the general morale bonus to my cavalry and we're all skippy eye as you can see and here is the other team. We have um, King's Clansman Turbo. Okay, now Turbo has got 18 infantry and two cavalry, but Turbo is actually Brotherhood member Lando. A lot of you watching this will probably know Lando. You've seen him play on Rome Total War regularly, but in the old days of Rome Total War, his first name was Turbo. And if you can see the tags that he's wearing there, this is when he was in the King's Clan before he actually joined the Brotherhood Clan there, okay? And if you notice here, can you see the battle formation, his infantry battle formation? Can you see the shape of that battle formation? Now, can you think why he's got his infantry battle formation shaped like that? Have a think about that, because uh, I say later on in the battle, you'll see why he's got his infantry shaped like that. Okay, uh, their next teammate is um, RTW player Uther. Now, a lot of you know Uther is um, in the Brotherhood clan, but for, I think it was about three years, he actually left the Brotherhood and became freelance. Okay, now he's got 14 infantry and six cavalry. And as I say, um, at this stage of his kind of career on Rome Total War, he is a freelancer. And there you are, you can see that he's bought an armored, old school armored cavalry general there. Be interesting to see how he handles that army during the course of the battle. Uh, their next teammate is um, General Shuffles there, uh, DCH. Now, I think he was in charge of the DCH clan. I think he was the leader of that clan. And he has got 18 infantry and two cavalry. And Shuffles is a very good player, if I remember correctly. And as I say, you can see within his name there, Jen, because I think he was the general, the guy in charge of the DCH clan. And their last teammate 
is an RTW player called Three Lions. He's got 14 infantry and 6 cavalry. Um, I don't really remember a lot about this guy, but I think he was quite a good player for his time. So there's the enemy team. It should be an easy battle for you to watch because all the enemy team are either Red Julii or Purple SPQR. And of course, uh, the Brotherhood team are all Blue Scipii. So as I say, it should be an easy battle for you to follow. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I just thought I'd like to show you a bit of old school, old fashioned armoured cavalry general use there. Can you see Uther, Uther moving that fast moving armoured cavalry general around the battlefield there, trying to be a nuisance, trying to cause disruption, trying to harass and harangue the enemy. Can you, but can you see FF has brought his cavalry out there in wide formation there to counter Uther's uh, cavalry general there? Okay. But uh, as I say, Uther trying to be a nuisance with that cavalry general. This is this is what I, um, I've said to you in the past. And um, before we change to infantry generals, and most of us bought an armoured cavalry general, this is a type of tactics that you were seeing all over the battlefield. If you can imagine that eight generals have bought armoured cavalry general units here, can you imagine the disruption? Um, the harassment that you could do with your fast-moving armoured cavalry general. So what you're watching here is genuinely old-school, old-fashioned use of the armoured cavalry general, even though it, it, this is 14 years ago, and uh, you should find it quite interesting. Okay, do you remember earlier we said we'd have a look at why um, Turbo has got his battle formation shaped like that? And that is because, look, this end of his battle formation, he can butt up securely against his allies, um, army there, look. but here, with the shape of this battle formation on the flank, look, it makes it very difficult for enemy teams to flank him there, look, can you see what I mean? That's why his battle formation is shaped like that, so he can kind of butt up with one side of his battle formation against his ally, but he covers the flank with the shape of that battle formation. You don't see that used uh, today. I, I can't remember the last time we've seen that battle formation used like that, but as you can see, it can be very effective on the flank. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought I'd show you what we call the expanding glitch. And what, what you'll find is that sometimes your army will just um, expand, all the units just spread out all over the battlefield, and it is a definite glitch and we call it the expanding glitch there, but whenever you see an army glitch in front of you, you never attack, um, you always kind of back off if anything, because uh, obviously uh, nobody wants cheap kills in Rome Total War, So, but sometimes an army a glitch in front of you, um, when you've got your guys on autopiler, and before you can stop them, they've thrown a volley of pilers in, which is a bit unfortunate when that happens, but I just thought this was a good ex example to show you of the expanding glitch that we get from time to time there. So, uh, as you can see, his cavalry hasn't glitched at all. It was just the movement of his infantry seemed to trigger it. And nobody seems to know what causes these glitches. It just seems to happen. But it is very annoying when it does happen to your army. Okay, um, at uh, this very, very early stage of the battle, you'll see Shuffles has got one of his forward units into Testudo. And you'll see that Uther has got a couple of his units in Testudo as well. There's been a bit of pilot exchanging going on there. As you can see there, you can see there's lots of pilots being thrown in from one pilot shield unit into another. As I say, the Brotherhood team are all the blue Scipii army, and the uh, enemy team are the red and purple Roman armies. There's a unit in Testudo. Remember that Testudo uh, formation there was actually used by the Romans back in the day. Very, very effective at repelling any kind of um, missiles and things like that. Right, let's just uh, pause the game for a second here. So as you can see there, you've got Uther there, looking like he's being quite aggressive there. But if you notice here, can you see that Talos has turned some of his infantry units onto the flank of Uther there? If you notice, it, notice there, Uther's been so aggressive. Look, he's kind of, uh, his army sticks out a little bit, exposing its flank. And you can see that Talos is trying to make the most of that there. Um, throwing pilers, I'm guessing into the flank of Uther's army, there you go. But you can see also that Uther has turned units to actually uh, counter Talos's units there. Let's say a bit of pilot exchange going on there between the two armies. And there's um, Uther there charging his armoured cavalry generally and again like a bang! And it smashes in there. 
As I say, the armored cavalry general fully upgraded with two hit points. Excellent specifications there. There you are. Charged in, smashed into infantry. I don't think he lost a single a cavalry man there from his armored cavalry general um, attack, but he uh, certainly did some damage there. Pause the game for a second. You can see Talos there was counterattacking with his cavalry there, try and catch uh, Uther's general. But uh, as I say, you can see there that Talos is definitely trying to push in on Uther's flank. And uh, say a lot of pilot exchanging going on there. But if you notice there, did you notice that Uther kind of drew Talos's cavalry on to Uther's pilots there? If you notice there, I think Talos lost a few cavalry to some um, of Uther's Julii um, infantry pilots there. So um, that was a nice little uh, tactic by Uther. See, with that, ar that fast moving armored cavalry general, it's surprising what you can do. Um, the skills have been kind of lost over the years that you could use with them, but they, they are a very useful unit. Here you can see, I think it shuffles attack in there. Over on the right flank, you'll see it's my army facing Lando's army there. A bit of pilot exchanging going on. In fact, a bit of point blank uh, pilot exchanging going on there, look. Oh my gosh, you're not going to miss from that range, are you? Well, it'll be interesting to see how Lando uh, moves his army there. Because the King's Clan, as I say, this is a King's War rules battle. And it's uh, like a um, kind of rules that uh, the King's Clan actually made. So um, Turbo in the actual King's Clan should be pretty good at... Um, this uh, particular battle. Here we can see that Julio cavalry charging in there like a bang as it smashed in there, including Uther's armored cavalry general. But remember what we talked about um, on these KWR battles where every single unit is fully upgraded. Cavalry is not um, as effective, obviously, as what it would be on a 31k battlefield. So what I tended to do in these KWRs, I just keep my cavalry at the back, um, just leaving them there until the enemy units get tired or battle damage and then you get the most there. You can see the FS just charges cavalry into those Julio infantry. Now if that was 31k, those cavalry may well have routed those two units. But as I say, because every single unit in this battle is fully upgraded, you'll find this a lot more difficult to kill units there. And here you can see Talos charging his cavalry in there. Again, trying to catch um, Uther's red Julio cavalry there. As I say, with these KWR battles, because it's 60k, a lot of pilot exchanging going on there, because it's 60k and every single unit is fully upgraded, obviously the battles take longer um, because um, units take a lot uh, more to kill them. So uh, obviously uh, the battles do, uh, KWR battles do tend to take quite a long time, really. But uh, I can see in this battle, there's a lot of aggressive players in this battle there. You can see um, little attacks going in. Over here on the right flank, you can see um, Turbo attacking my forward units with his red Julii um, units there. You still see pilot exchanging going on between um, Turbo and myself. Now I'm just wondering whether Turbo's thinking about bringing a group of his infantry around the flank of my infantry there. That's something that we would probably do today, do you think? Um, as, you know, tactics and strategies have evolved over the years. Do you think that's something that maybe uh, we would do today? In the center here, let's say you can see, um, I think it's Eth uh, against Uther, and you've got Talos versus Shuffles. And over on our far left flank, you've got Killer B against Three Lions. As I say, at Testuda, you can see a lot of generals have put their forward units or some of their forward units into Testudo there. And there you can see um, F F sorry, um, Killer B there attacking with some of his uh, Scipio troops against that um, SBQR uh, unit in Testudo. Just look at those um, pilots going in there. It was almost raining pilots there, isn't it? <clears throat> From both um, generals there. That's going to be... Uh, killing a lot of forward units there. As I say, that Testudo, those Testudo units, very, very effective at repelling um, enemy missiles. As 
as I say, I keep my cavalry in these KWR battles. I keep my cavalry at the back there. Um, as I say, I don't think there's any use. Uh, you know, you don't get the full potential use out of your cavalry in these KWR battles um, at the beginning of the battle. What's best to, to wait for is for en enemy units to get tired and battle damaged, and then you get the most out of your cavalry then when they hit those tired battle damaged units um, on KWR. Here you can see there's a bit of skirmish in between Turbo and my army there. You can just tell that by the dead there. As we know, Turbo is a very aggressive um, attacking player, as he is as Lando um, in modern battles. But here you see, uh, it struck me that Uther was being very, very aggressive in this battle. The way he was moving his infantry, throwing his infantry forward and smashing him with his cavalry. He seemed to be very, very aggressive there. As I say, you can see Talos coming in on his flank a little bit there. Let's say it looks like there the enemy cavalry is waiting to um, waiting for a chance to charge in there. Let's say over on our far flank here, where a killer bee is facing at three lions. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. We know that Killer B, um, he used to be a very aggressive attacking player there. And here, as I say, you got Shuffles facing, uh, I think it's Talos, as we move along the battle there. And then, of course, Eth Eth is facing Uther. Right, pause the game for a second here. So, as I say, you can see here you've got units from Killer B, okay? This is how, I just want to show you some good teamwork here. Now, Killer B's arm is over on our left flank, and yet he's bought, I think it's three units over here to support Talos in the center. Plus you've got um, units from Eth Eth, he's brought them in here as well, okay? So uh, as I say, really good teamwork by the Brotherhood team here. Any weakness that they, they perceive in our battle line, they send reinforcements there to kind of shore up that area. So uh, well done to Eth Eth and um, Killer B there, being re bringing reinforcements over into the center. As I say, over on the right flank here, where my arm is facing um, Turbo's, King's Turbo's army there. You can see, as I said, uh, Turbo, don't forget, Turbo is actually Lando in today's modern battles. But uh, we know Lando's a very aggressive attacking player. And even back in 2010, you can see that uh, his aggressive uh, credentials are on the table there by the way that he moves his, um, his troops around the battlefield. Looking to be aggressive, always looking to be attacking there. They were just going to throw those pilers in some more units. It'd be interesting to see if Turbo does try a flank in action here, or just tries the, uh, you know, trying to smash in the uh, the front door here. Right, this is a nice cavalry charge by FF there. I think he was thinking of just smashing in to uh, Turbo's inf engaged infantry there, but Turbo pulled a couple of infantry units back, seeing that cavalry on the way. So uh, a nice move by both of them there. But as I say, it strikes me that in this battle, Uther's being very, very aggressive. This is a nice cavalry hit, I think, by Talos there, into Uther's infantry, look and bang, and it smashes in there. If you notice here, the enemy battle line seems to be a bit thin. I don't know what you think. Do you think in the centre there, the uh, the Julii enemy battle line looks a bit thin there? Possibly uh, a place for the Brotherhood team to push through, maybe? As I say, over here, you can see the three lions there attacking the forward units of Killer B. As I say, remember, every single unit in this battle is fully upgraded, so um, units take a lot to kill. Uh, in KWR battles, so that these battles do tend to take quite a long time. Let's say three lions may well look to flank there. Killer B's already anticipated that look and put a couple of units there to kind of counter any uh, flanking action there by three lions. You'll see that shuffles his army. Do you notice he's not kind of committing many units there? Okay, here comes a nice cavalry tap from the Brotherhood team. Look, I'm bang and bang there. I just think Talos and FF is that charging into the enemy uh, Julii um, infantry there. I think the Brotherhood team there can see that that's quite a thin part of the battle line there. You can see another cavalry charge going in there like a bang as that uh, Brotherhood uh, cavalry charge is in there. So you can see here that the Brotherhood team 
can see that that area there looks a little bit weak. Do you think so? Do you think that the enemy uh, Julii battle line there does look a little bit weak? Maybe we could push through there if we uh, commit enough infantry and cavalry. I don't know what all of you thinking um, about that, but it certainly does look a weak spot in their battle line. No depth to it, is there? Can you see? He's got a couple of cavalry units in behind, but there's not a lot of depth to that particular part of the enemy battle line there. So you can see them really committing the attack. Right over here, you'll see that that um, three lines has got cavalry in on the flank of Killer B, which he's charging in. Look, and bang, as that cavalry charges in there. But if you notice there, Killer B is already starting to turn his flanking army there. So that three lines is turning the flank of the Brotherhood team there on our left flank. But as I say, here in the centre, the right centre here, the enemy, um, not much depth there. You can see that Shuffles have brought some of his infantry over because he spotted the danger to the enemy team there, to the uh, Julioid team there, because that is a very thin area there. And if we're, you know, if we're pretty smart about this, maybe we could punch a hole through the battle line in its thinnest point, which is definitely there. As I say, not much in depth there, is there? Just a few cavalry units. If we could punch a hole through there, that would be uh, pretty good for the Brotherhood team, I think. So that's the place to watch, maybe. Now, as I say, over on the left flank here, you'll see that the enemy Three Lions army has made Killer B turn the flank. Okay, so our left flank has been turned here for our battle line. So, um, as I say, um, I think Killer B has done a good thing, done the right thing there, but uh, Three Lions there was very aggressive. As I say, in this right centre area here, if we charge, if we did a surge attack with infantry and cavalry now, do you think that we could break through that thin red line there? Maybe we could, cavalry and infantry attack. Here you'll see Lando looking to flank there. Can you see him moving his units round? Being very aggressive as he usually is. There pinning and holding the forward units of my uh, army look but maybe looking to bring infantry around the flank but if you notice that i've anticipated that and i put a couple of units there ready to counter any flanking action by a uh, turbo if he does try any flanking attack there but meanwhile here you can see that another cavalry attack going in there you can see that cavalry going in of ss look at bang as he smashes in there as you can see, we're trying to, I think we are now trying to punch a hole through that thin part of the enemy battle line there. As I say, a surge, an infantry and cavalry surge attack there, which we might do today, okay? As I say, tactics and strategies have evolved over the years, haven't they? So, um, you know, an infantry and cavalry surge attack in that place could break through the, uh, the enemy uh, Julii infantry and cavalry there. But as I say here on our right flank, you can see it's my army against Turbo's army there. And here you can see, um, as I say, the enemy have brought some of their Julii reinforcements over there to try and hold that spot. And as I say, three lions on our left flank with his the purple SBQR army has been very aggressive towards Killer B. As I say, making Killer B turn the flank of the Brotherhood team there on the left. And you can see it looks to me like uh, three lions would like to get in behind us. Look at the positioning of his infantry. You can see what's going through his mind. He would have liked to got behind us, but you can see that Killer B has now moved his infantry formation round to try and counter um, that uh, three lions trying to get in behind us or anything like that. So um, a good bit of uh, chess, I would say, going on on our left flank there between three lions and Killer B. Remember, Killer B has sent some of his infantry over to try and shore up our centre a bit with Talos. But look at the enemy cavalry there, ready to charge in. And that Julii um, infantry there could charge in there on our flank. Meanwhile, here you can see the enemy in this position are getting thinner and thinner. Okay, over here you'll see that um, Turbo's committed a heck of a lot of his infantry. Now, you can see a lot of his infantry is engaged. You can see my cavalry moving forward there looking to possibly smash in to the uh, enemy Julii infantry there. Can you see my cavalry in wedge formation for more penetration and more impact? And bang! So I smash in there. It wouldn't surprise me if the enemy counter-attacked with cavalry. There you are. You can see the enemy counter-attacking with cavalry. 
So I'm going to pull my cavalry back out now. Done the damage I wanted to. I didn't rout any of those units, but uh, I would have um, damaged a lot of them there. As I say, um, as the battle's gone on, a lot of enemy units will be tired and battle depleted. So now's the time for me to start using my cavalry, as I believe that it's, um, you know, you're going to get the most out of them now, charging into those tired, depleted armies. Right, pause the game for a second. So in this area here, it looks like we've broken through. There's one infantry unit there, but can you see there's nothing in front of these um, of our Brotherhood Scipio infantry. If we push through there, we can either charge into the left or charge around to the right there with infantry and cavalry. So that's where we need to punch through there. You can see there's nothing in front of us there. That's uh, like an open door for us to be able to push through there. So uh, anyway, we can try and take out that general. That, uh, that um, Julio General looks a bit exposed to a hit to me. Right, now you can see here that Turbo spotted the danger in the centre. Oh, that's good news. We've just taken out Julio uh, General there. But you can see Turbo has spotted the danger in the centre of his team there. You can see we're starting to push through a little bit here. Trying to kill that uh, that General there. That routed him, that's good news. That's good news there. That's uh, We've taken that General out, taken the morale bonus there away from the uh, the enemy team but as I say you'll see Turbo now moving over to the centre so he's leaving the flank and moving over into the centre to shore up um, that centre part which was a very weak part of the enemy battle line there in fact we'd actually penetrated that part of the battle line so this is a good supporting move by Turbo there so what I've got to do is I've got to shadow him with my army because uh, obviously Turbo is my target we were facing each other on the flank so I should now be kind of um, shadowing him to make sure he's not sending his troops anywhere else to attack my allies there and as I say you can see Turbo moving back but back into the centre as well Look, there's an SPQR cavalry charge there of three lines like a bang charging there might have been going from one of our um, Scipio generals there can you see that Scipio general of ours I think that might be Talos's general would have been a good target for the enemy there try and take that uh, general out right you can see us counter-attacking see s cavalry a uh, counter-attack in there and you can see my cavalry charging in there as well and you'll see i'm moving my infantry forward here and you can see my cavalry going in there like a bang so i charge my cavalry there into turbo's infantry i'm going to pull my cavalry back out so I went in there, did the damage I wanted to, damaged several of their units, may have routed a couple of their units, pulled my cavalry back out. You can see there that Turbo's charging his cavalry in as well. So you can see there that, um, as I say, I'm going to shadow Turbo's infantry with my infantry there. But over on our left flank here, as I say, that three lines has been very aggressive there. Um, but Killer B has uh, countered him well. Looks to me like there's a cavalry hit going in there, look. And he, some of his units hit, and then he decided to pull his cavalry back there. But you can see three lions here moving his SBQR troops around the flank still. And here you can see there's been a lot of fighting going on there. And let's say, what I need to do now, I think, is to engage um, Turbo's infantry. I think if you look at Turbo's infantry, a lot of his infantry is quite battle damaged, battle depleted. I think these days I would be more aggressive maybe and move forward onto his infantry now to pin and hold them. But as I say, over 14 years, tactics, strategies, army builds have all kind of evolved, haven't they? From, uh, as I say, 14 years ago here. Let's say Killer B there facing that uh, three lions. And I think the enemy team have done really well to kind of shore up that weak point in their battle line there. And it'll be interesting to see um, if we can uh, find another weak point in their battle line to attack there. But that was, a, as I say, a good move by uh, King's Turbo to move from that flank over to the centre there to kind of shore up the centre area. Now, should I move my infantry round there? As I say... Um, it might be a little bit of pilot exchanging going on there still. There's still troops with pilots here. You can see I'm putting that unit in open order there as a pilot shield unit against any pilots that Turbo may well have to throw into my um, <clears throat> my army there. 
as I say, you can see there that, that three lines is really pinning and holding Killer B there. You can see Ath, Ath being a good teammate that he is. Look, he's got units helping Killer B. He's got units shoring up the centre where Talos has lost a lot of his troops. And as I say, we've got our cavalry locked and loaded. There's my cavalry locked and loaded. As I say, I kept my cavalry mostly back till the enemy troops have actually um, been fighting. So they'll be battle depleted and tired. And I think that's when my cavalry can do the most damage there. But as I say, I think I need to attack with my army there. Over in there, a cavalry hit like a bang. As those cavalry hits are going in to the enemy troops. But at the moment, it seems to be a little bit of a stalemate at the moment, doesn't it? And there goes the SBQ or a cavalry of three lions charging in again. Look, ah, bang, as he smashes in there. Oh my gosh. As I say, if that was a 31k battle, that impact of cavalry could well have routed some of our uh, Scipio units there. But as I say, because every unit in this uh, battle is fully upgraded, it's a lot more difficult to rout units here. You already can see Turbo moving further over to the other flank. Now what I should be doing, if I was fast here, I should be really on his tail with my infantry, I think. I think I should really be an aggressive there. But here you can see the enemy Julio really pushing in on our Scipio ally, possibly trying to take out our allies general unit there, which was a bit exposed to a hit. You can see Killer B's infantry there, and he's got his cavalry there ready to charge in. But as I say, with my infantry, I should be, I feel that I should be more aggressive in this battle. You can see I'm really moving forward there onto Turbo's infantry. But um, to me, looking at the general position of the battlefield here on this flank, I think I should be more aggressive with maybe infantry and cavalry attacks there, pinning and holding a lot of the enemy Julio troops is what I'm thinking there. Here you can see a nice cavalry attack there from F straight into the flank there of the enemy Julia. Bang! Routed two enemy units on impact. Can you see my cavalry coming in here as well? My cavalry's charging in there as well. Look. Ah, bang! As my cavalry smashes into those Julio units as well. So that's a combination of FS cavalry and my cavalry there. Now what I could do is a surge attack on my infantry there. Isn't it funny, you know when you watch battle replays, you think, oh, I wish I'd have done that differently or something, you know, I could have done that better. But here, as I say, you can see on our left flank, that three lions have been aggressive to Killer B all the way through the battle there. So uh, well done to three lions and well done to Killer B there. As I say, it's a bit like a chess game over there. You can see I pulled my cavalry back locked and loaded it and then charge it back in and get a full cavalry charge bonus like and bang my cavalry smashes in there routed a couple of units on impact there you can see i've committed several of my infantry units here now to attacking um turbos um julio infantry there in front of me And you can see here that Turbo's are running his general around the battlefield there. See another cavalry charge there from my cavalry, like a bang, as I charge in there. But like I say, I should be moving my infantry forward at the same time here, I feel. But it could be a combination of infantry and cavalry attack. Could break Turbo's um, infantry units in front of me if I did that. Um, but over here on our left flank, you'll see... As I say, you can see that three lines cavalry just sat there at the moment. Now I thought he might have tried to get his cavalry either around the flank there to charge into Killer B's flank or get that cavalry even in behind us there. But at the moment he's just kind of sat there maybe concentrating on his infantry tactics. You can see Talos is still holding the centre there. But as I say, I feel, feel on this flank there, here, as I say, these days I'd do a, probably an infantry surge attack backed up with my cavalry and probably rout these Julio units in front of me. So, um, but I, I should imagine all of us that watch battle replays, we all think we should have done things differently there. But there where you can see FF there and Talos holding the center. And you can see that, um, that three lions is, has even got infantry units in there. And you can see my cavalry locked and loaded. And say I've got my three um, Praetorian cavalry in wedge formation for more penetration and more impact. And as I say here, can you see my cavalry charging forward there? Maybe going to look to try and hit that 
Julio unit. You can see, I think FF charging cavalry in as well. Look, and bang, as my cavalry smashes in there. You can see um, Turbo there counter attacking with his cavalry. Look, and bang, as he charges cavalry forward. But now, see, I, I think I should be committing more infantry there. Do you see what I mean? I think um, that's what I should be doing with, uh, with those infantry units there. Moving forward, being more aggressive there, I think, is what's needed with my infantry. And here you can see that three lines bringing his cavalry over here. I got the impression that with his cavalry, he's not exactly sure of where he wants to go or what he wants to hit with that cavalry. He could smash them into my infantry, my engaged infantry now. It might be a good idea for me to pull a couple of my infantry units back um, in anticipation of a cavalry hit coming in on my engaged infantry. Might be worthwhile um, thinking about that. There you are, can you see? I'm moving a couple of my infantry units back out of the fray there in anticipation of that cavalry hit coming in. I've got my cavalry locked and loaded there in behind my infantry uh, to counter-attack if he does charge in there. But at the moment, his cavalry, which could be very, very um, effective on the battlefield, is just sat there, isn't it? And at this stage of the battle, maybe bringing it over here to this flank might have been more um, kind of productive, if you see what I mean. But his infantry, certainly he is uh, very, very aggressive. And as I say, I think it has been like a bit of a game of chess on this left flank between Killer B and uh, the three lions there. But uh, you can see that the uh, enemy Julii team are getting smaller and smaller. Can you see the area that they're holding because they're losing more and more units? Um, where the ground that they're holding is getting smaller and smaller as we're pushing in. You can see that cavalry locked and loaded, ready to hit my infantry there. Let's say I've got my cavalry uh, over there. Now here you can see that three lines decided he's gonna take his cavalry over here and maybe smash into the center here. Looks like that's where he's gonna hit with some of his cavalry units anyway. Um, bang! As they smash in there into the flank of our Scipio, engaged Scipio troops there, and routed one of our units. That was a nice hit by those um, cavalry units coming in there. But over here you'll see I've moved my infantry forward there. And I can see I've got my cavalry locked and loaded there. I can see, I think it's is that uh, an enemy general unit there. I'm definitely going to go for that general unit, I would have thought. Um, even 14 years ago. There you can see my cavalry going in there like a bang! Going for that Julio General of Shuffles. That's what I'm going for there. Try and take out Shuffles is general there. Take away the general morale bonus there. But it should be a cavalry and infantry attack. So I should be throwing infantry in there as well. As well as cavalry there. Try and take that uh, that Julio General out. I say take the general out, take the general morale bonus away. Now over here is a say, can you see three lions he was on the other flank wasn't he earlier and now he's brought his cavalry over onto this flank it's kind of to me he can't really decide on the best place to strike with his cavalry but in all fairness to the brotherhood team we're covering his cavalry with infantry there wherever he moves his cavalry is being covered by infantry there goes my cavalry charging again like going for that julio general and bang they hit that julio general remember though these uh, units are all um, fully upgraded right can you see that shuffles could see what I was doing and has now moved his general out of harm's way so that was a good tactical move there by shuffles he could see I was trying to take his general out and he's put that in a more safer position now so it's uh, it's still giving the general morale bonus to his team these three units of mine I should be moving they shouldn't just be sat there and as I say you can see the enemy Julia um, infantry there being very aggressive yeah, right, I finally decided to move these three units now to maybe get in behind the enemy team. That might be a good uh, thing to do. Maybe even go for that Julio General there, which I was trying to hit with my uh, my cavalry earlier. There's the Julio General of Shuffles. Try and take that, uh, that General out there. You can see there the enemy counter-attacking with some cavalry and infantry units there. You can see me moving my infantry trying to get in looks to me like I'm trying to get in behind the enemy team there trying to get in behind maybe to strike into the rear of engaged enemy troops but I need to be careful that I'm not isolated around there I can see a lot of um, okay there are battle damage units but there are a lot 
of enemy units around the rear there. As you can see me pushing forward there into those Julio units. I need to bring my cavalry round here as well, I would think, to support these infantry units. So remember that the Brotherhood team are the blue Scipii and the enemy team are the red Julii and the purple Espicure. They already can see a couple of S um, Julii units attacking the units I've took in behind there. There's a nice cavalry charge there. I think that's Killer B just charging there. So as I say, that... Um, three lines look he's now moved his cavalry over there he's kind of moved his cavalry if you notice he's kind of been all the way around the battlefield with that cavalry but he hasn't struck with it yet so that cavalry there it could be a very powerful could be maybe even possibly um you know battle turning there if he uses the right target to to use that cavalry there as i say you can see um i've got my cavalry and infantry in behind the enemy team now you can see I'm pushing in on those enemy Julii troops. There, and you can see that cavalry charge in there, come bang, as it charges in there. Let's say I need to attack those Julio infantry with my infantry now. I think that would uh, help quite a lot. But as I say, that um, three lions with his SBQR cavalry, I just don't think he's quite sure on where he can strike, where the best place it place is. But you can see that um, the Brotherhood team has been covering his cavalry with their infantry. Oh, that's good news for us. Julio General's just been taken out. So that's taking the morale bones away. Right, you can see a lot of the enemy team now are starting to rout with the pressure that we put on them from both infantry and cavalry. And I think, looking at the battle now, it looks like our team... The Brotherhood team has managed to go on and win the battle. As I say, unfortunately with these old battle replays, sometimes they show the battle results at the end, sometimes they don't. Because remember, this battle was fought from a CD um, and on the Game Spy server. And for some reason, some of the old games just don't show the battle results. Okay, let's pause the game for a second here. I think we'd agree that the uh, the blue Scipio Brotherhood team has won there. And if you look all the way over on the right flank, this is where my army was facing um, King's Turbo's army there on the right flank. So you can see there are quite a few dead. You can see that's quite an intense bit of the fighting. But as we move further on up the battle line here, just look at the intensity of the fight in here. I mean, it's like a carpet of dead, isn't it? If you just look at this area here, I mean, the uh, cavalry and infantry impacts that were going in there. I mean, like I said, it is like a carpet of dead here as we move across the, um, from one side of the battlefield to the other. Everywhere you can see there's dead. There's just a couple of enemy units left, I think there but as you can see our team um, <clears throat> has gone on to um, to win the battle there as I say um, unfortunately with these old games the uh, very often they don't come up with the actual um, uh, battle results so um, I hope this one does but uh, as I say it's a 14 year old battle fought on the games by server and we all had uh, our CDs in the CD drive playing this battle, so um, I'm not sure if it uh, if it will. But as I say, you can see there that the. Uh, do you think that this um, <clears throat> this will be an average victory or a close victory? Which do you think it would be? <coughs> oh, there you are. The battle's replays finished, and it, we haven't seen the battle um, kind of results there. Which is always a bit of a shame because I like to see the kills there. And, and I'm sure a lot of you like to see the kills, don't you, as well, for um, each um, general. But uh, as I say, um, you can see it was a, a pretty good battle. And as I say, do you think it would have been a, an average victory there for the Brotherhood team or a close victory? Just looking at the units that we've got left, I would probably say that it was an average victory. But um, please put your thoughts in the comments about that, whether you think it would be average or close. And as I say, it was a very intense battle. And um, 
I just hope that you find it interesting seeing how we used to fight our battles 14 years ago. As I say, that was a, a King's War rules battle there, 60k each, and the only rules are Rome versus Rome, um, no archers and no artillery. And as I say, every single unit on the battlefield was fully upgraded there. I think it's quite interesting, you know, to watch tactics and strategies from a long time ago and seeing how you would do things differently. You can see that we've got, I think we've got three generals left in this battle, if I remember correctly. From when I watched the battle replay, yes, there you are. We've got three generals left there. So that's three general morale bonuses that we uh, would have still been given to our army, even if the battle had been um, more close than it was. OK, Spurt Commander saying, uh, please leave a comment or a thumbs up. It's always nice to read what you think about our battles. Bye for now.